Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Better Business Bureau uh, Summit 2020. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 18th, and you are uh, signed up and participating in the uh, 12 o'clock to 12.30 p.m. breakout, uh, The Value of Higher Education During the Pandemic and Beyond, sponsored by uh, Post University. Uh, my name is Eric Berthel. I'm here with my colleague, Sean Wisenhant. Hopefully you can uh, hear and uh, see us uh, on your screens now. We do have a PowerPoint that is going to be uh, running as we speak, uh, if you will, behind us or on top of us, however the uh, appears on your screen. Uh, and we will uh, advance to the next slide. Um, uh, as we mentioned, Post University is the sponsor of this event. And we're going to, uh, in just a few minutes, provide you with a little bit of, a little bit of information about the history of the university. But uh, at this point, I'd like to, um, uh, I'd like to turn the uh, the reins over, if you will, to my colleague, Sean, to allow him to introduce himself. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Sean Wisenhant. Uh, I'm the Director of Corporate Partnerships at Post University. Uh, we're very excited to be part of this summit uh, and be able to share with you a little bit about um, education uh, in the uh, pandemic uh, sort of world that we're living in right now. Um, we'll. We'll get to some of that a little bit later, but um, thank you for having us and thank you for attending. Thank you, Sean. And again, my name is Eric Berthel. I'm the Associate Director of Corporate Partnerships at the university. And um, uh, again, we're, we're glad to have you here. We're glad to uh, have an opportunity to speak to you a little bit about higher education and the experience of, uh, of the university during these, uh, this very strange time that we're living in. Uh, but the, the one question that does come up that we'll, we'll start with is uh, in terms of what does corporate partnerships do? As you can see, we are both uh, part of the corporate partnerships team at Post. And essentially, we are building uh, uh, higher education partnerships and relationships between businesses and organizations. So uh, it would be logical uh, in the simplest of terms that that would be why we are uh, here with the Better Business uh, Bureau Summit uh, this year to uh, discuss with you opportunities uh, for uh, educational partnerships and relationships, as well as um, the, uh, the, the things we've learned in the last nine months during the, uh, during the pandemic. So um, this is basically our uh, brief agenda for the remaining time that we have with you today. We wanted to discuss uh, the whole work from home piece, uh, employee retention, employee value and um, special programs. That's really the lay of the land for the next 25 minutes or so. Uh, and we will have time at the end for you to ask questions or to put questions into uh, chat. And there will of course be some information that we share about following up with us if you should think of something after this presentation is complete. So now I'll uh, turn back to uh, Sean to uh, provide a uh, pretty interesting history about Post that if you're from Connecticut and, and you know Post, you may not have known uh, all of this about us. So, Sean. Thank you. So, you know, typically in, in uh, a presentation like this, I would ask people how many of you are familiar with Post University? Um, and uh, if you are, are, Eric said, if you're a, a native to uh, Connecticut, you may or may not know of us, um, but if you do, you know that we've had a lot of different versions of who Post University is. But uh, as it says, we were founded in 1890, so we're 130 years old. Um, we have 
we have evolved and changed throughout the years to provide different um, uh, different needs, uh, educational needs over the years. Uh, of course, junior college uh, in the beginning, um, and then we we evolved and we were actually purchased by um, a Chinese company, and it was Takeo Post. Um, and then we are now the uh, version that we are now, which is Post University. Uh, we are Connecticut based, obviously. Um, you know the the great thing I like to tell is you know we we had a a, a major change in our leadership and our philosophy and our culture of, at post about five years ago and the the statistic there that shows fourteen thousand students uh, we had about six thousand total students um, five years ago and we have grown uh, exponentially to fourteen thousand students uh, with a thousand on our main campus uh, we do operate two campuses we'll talk about a little bit later on um, and how that can help your, uh, you and your employees um, with educational opportunities um, as we go through. Uh, we have 30 plus degrees uh, in associate, bachelor, and master's programs. Um, and um, it, you know, that ranges anything. Our, our Baldridge School of Business has the traditional business courses. We have the School of Arts and Sciences, um, as well as um, the Burke School. Uh, for um, public and uh, public um, administration. So there's all kinds of great opportunities. Uh, leader in online innovation, we, we were one of the first to uh, bring online education to the Northeast and, and certainly across the country as well. Um, but we're, we're very proud of where we are now versus uh, the evolution that we've we've come through over the, over the years. So um, that's that's kind of our history of post. So let's um, let's move into um, a discussion about the pandemic. Um, and as we know, uh, right around the St. Patrick's Day holiday uh, weekend, just before that, um, Connecticut was thrust into um, you know its own beginning of its own experience with what is now we know a global pandemic uh, that has touched just about every corner of the planet. Um, what we have seen from the higher ed perspective. Um, in addition to what has been seen just in the in the workplace, is that um, businesses that that were not necessarily having to be out and about um, delivering a product or service, for example, um, you know, someone who might be running a um, a painting service. Obviously, you can't work from home necessarily because you can't paint someone's house remotely via a go to meeting or or a Zoom call. But what we did see, uh, and what we continue to see, is that in um, types of businesses where uh, people were in an office uh, that that virtually all of those businesses uh, were able to at some point in time uh, resolve to a work from home situation and from that came uh, not only having to people having to figure out technology and uh, all of us learning how to uh, how to have the right appearance on on zoom and go to meeting and and Fuse and uh, uh, Microsoft Teams and all of these different wonderful platforms that are uh, available out there. Um, but we, um, we also have discovered that, that people have access to a little bit more time throughout the uh, course of their day. Uh, there's no travel uh, for people driving to and from work. Uh, people are not going to meetings outside of their workplace. They're doing them virtually. Uh, they're not going to conferences. They're doing them virtually. So what arose from that 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 newly found time if you will was a greater opportunity for online learning uh, you know i guess there's when people think about online learning they think about perhaps um, a student being in a classroom from you know 7 30 in the morning until two o'clock in the afternoon and while someone could absolutely be doing that in an online in online learning environment with post university uh, and taking a number of classes in a row every day. Uh, the reality is that if you're taking one or two classes at any given point in time, you may have a class that meets on a Tuesday and Thursday from you know 2:30 to 3:45 or 3:340 or 3:50, and then you know you have an opportunity for an employee or you as the employer or yourself to take advantage of some of that that time that you have not spent traveling to a meeting or traveling to some other, other place to, uh, to conduct business, to actually apply that to online learning. And we have seen 
uh, and your opportunity to do online learning. And we have seen, as Sean mentioned a moment ago, we've actually seen an uptick in enrollments for online learning since, uh, since the, the COVID outbreak uh, at the beginning of this year. So when you keep in mind that, that as a student who might be um, employed, so not a traditional, just out of high school, going to four-year college type uh, learner, but instead someone who's in a full-time job and is looking to maybe finish a degree or looking to start a degree, in this unique work from home environment for some of the workforce, there is an opportunity for someone to, uh, to get enrolled into a online uh, learning environment and to actually successfully participate in, uh, in classes that are being offered uh, online. And what we have seen from that, uh, both prior to the pandemic and since then, is obviously there is a tremendous opportunity for uh, for an employer to grow their, uh, their, their workforce and their employee. Um, you know, we use an example of someone who might be, for example, in your, um, in your accounting uh, department, whether that's a department with a lot of people or uh, it's a spouse or a sibling who's doing the books for your business, whatever the size of your business may be. But that person may have uh, spent 10, 15 years um, doing the books and they don't have any formal education, let's say as an accountant or in accounting, or uh, maybe they've always thought of being an accountant officially and getting a degree and, and maybe becoming a CPA, what have you. The uh, pandemic has presented great opportunity, you know, for, again, for a better use of time if they're working from home to go and, and get online and start working towards obtaining uh, the goal of maybe a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree in uh, in accounting or any other business type uh, uh, type curriculum. So what we see as a result of this is employees are able to grow. And again, what we've seen from employers that have had some of their employees that go in this direction, they get them back to school, they finish a degree they started and maybe got distracted because of life, uh, they got married, they started a family, whatever it may be, is that your, um, your workforce grows and the, the quality of your workforce grows as well. And what happens as a result of that many times is that you now have an employee that becomes more committed to, uh, to your business and to their job. And someone who might be saying, well, you know, I've been here for 10 years and you know, I do the books using that example and there's really no opportunity for me to do anything else. And, you know, what have you, um, they, when they're given an opportunity to go back to school and, and earn a degree uh, or start working towards a degree, uh, we have shown and we've seen from employers that there's greater employee retention. People will, will, will stay with an employer who makes an investment in, uh, in what they are doing uh, for the employer. And it makes, it makes perfect, uh, perfect sense. Um, the other piece that comes up with this is that you are also showing value back as the employer to your employees. You know, some some companies cannot afford to do a um, uh, a paid tuition reimbursement. Uh, some employers can do a small amount. Some employers are able to provide employee uh, tuition reimbursement up to the um, the non-taxable limit, uh, but from the IRS, which is five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars a year. Uh, whatever your situation is, it has been shown to us, again, through feedback from uh, employers and their employees who, who are uh, studying with us, that there is a, uh, a certain value that the employee now puts on their employer. And they say, you know what, this is pretty cool. My employer is making an investment in me. And they look differently at, at you as a employer by saying, that's pretty neat. You know, it's pretty cool that, that, that the employer is making the investment in, those, uh, in, the, in their employee. And of course, as, as, as we talk about with retention, your investment um, can sometimes also save you, uh, save, ultimately save you money. When we look at the example of the, the bookkeeper, you know, if you have someone who is uh, simply doing your books, who now um, has a certain level of training, uh, 
uh, maybe you don't have to rely upon an outside source for having to do some of the, the actual accounting work. Uh, not necessarily audits, although someone could get to that level of, uh, of uh, expertise within uh, their education. But you, uh, you may find yourself, depending on the size of your, uh, your business, you may find yourself actually um, not having to rely upon outside sources for some of the things that you now have an employee that has been trained and is skilled to provide to you. You know, and some of the other things that, some of the other examples and, and uh, educational paths, the curriculum that Post offers, you know, we are offering degrees in legal, uh, legal studies, uh, in marketing, in uh, human resources, uh, things like that. So uh, again, all of this comes down to uh, an opportunity for you to grow your workforce, to uh, help retain employees who might be looking for other opportunities because uh, they're, they're not seeing an opportunity to uh, advance in their own careers. You're adding value to yourself as an employer and your investment returns, uh, returns uh, dividends to you, again, in the, in the uh, area that you may not have to outsource something. And you're expanding the value of your workforce in, uh, in the same time. Sean, is there anything you want to add to that in terms of what I've just spoken to? No, I think I think you captured it all pretty well. The only thing I would add is that, uh, and we, we keep using the for example, it's it's sort of a, a an understanding for everybody that understands bookkeeping and and how to manage their business. You might have somebody in that position or in a similar position within your organization that allows. Uh, you know, they've they've over the years just done that job and they've done it well. Um, but they've, they've been really learning on the job and they don't have that formal education. Um, and maybe this is an opportunity while everybody's working from home and and uh, and not we realize not every company or organization works from home, uh, but maybe some of your office staff is. And this could be a good opportunity to really enhance that for them. Um, and, and again, back to that investment in, in, in your people, um, which we all know it's our, our greatest asset. So, no, I think you can actually look pretty good there. Great. So, um, and again, we're trying to be uh, trying to be cognizant of the time. We're looking at almost uh, 18 minutes after the hour, so we've got about 10 minutes left, um, including time for some questions and answers. So, let me move to the next slide in the presentation. So, we'd like to just talk to you a little bit about some of the uh, the opportunities um, with uh, with post university and um, we actually have um, we have two campuses. Uh, one is an actual uh, traditional main campus. For those of you that um, that are familiar with post and have some prior experience, you know that we have a uh, a beautiful uh, it's a small campus but a beautiful campus uh, right on the uh, in Waterbury, right on the uh, Middlebury um, uh, town line. Uh, we have dormitories there. We have our academic buildings. We have a student center. Um, you know, we have uh, athletic fields there. On that traditional main campus, we are offering uh, what many of you that may have gone to college uh, uh, prior to the online experience uh, would know as traditional 16-week semester. So uh, we start um, at the beginning of a calendar year in January with a spring semester that runs from January through, you know, about the first week of May. Uh, and then we have a fall semester that would start, you know, late August and continue right up through just before the uh, Christmas and New Year holidays. And that is our traditional main campus program. And that is, uh, again, with, um, in a non-COVID environment, would actually have students coming to our buildings and attending classes brick and mortar boots on the ground however you'd like to uh however you would like to um uh you know phrase it but actually showing up at a, at our main campus and uh in a classroom with a uh, teacher uh, an instructor a professor in 3d the other campus that we offer is our virtual campus and that is online and that is actually part of our accelerated degree program where we have uh, eight week terms. So instead of it being a 16 week semester, it's an eight week term. We run six of those terms throughout the course of a uh, 12 month 
period. The first term begins in July. The last term ends in June, again, with eight week uh, intervals. We call it an accelerated degree program because uh, obviously you're getting a three credit course done in eight weeks as opposed to 16 weeks. It's a different kind of student that participates in the accelerated degree program. In the accelerated degree program, we consider a student who is taking two classes in any term a full-time student. In a 16-week traditional main campus program, uh, we're looking at four classes, maybe five, if there's someone is truly um, you know, a, a high achiever as full-time in, uh, in that environment. So the eight-week terms are a lot more intense. They require a, a larger commitment from the student in order for them to ultimately be successful. But the reality is, for us, based upon many, many thousands of students who have gone through both of these programs, is that depending upon the learner, depending upon the student and their ability to, uh, to stay focused and to stay committed to this work, uh, we see a tremendous amount of success. We have some students that say they would never go back to a 16-week semester. They love doing the eight-week terms. It's intense, it's fast, but um, it's accelerated and they can, earn a, uh, they can earn a degree in a faster uh, amount of time as opposed to the traditional 16-week semester. And of course, the accelerated degree program is 100% online. And just in the interest of full disclosure, right now our main campus is not open. So we actually, because of our, uh, uh, our success and, uh, and, and being a leader in online learning through the accelerated degree program, we were able to very quickly, in a matter of 24 hours, transition our main campus brick and mortar to a virtual environment with live classes taking place. So, uh, so right now, even for the spring semester of 2021, we will remain on our main campus in a virtual environment. Students are still showing up for class, but it's from the comfort of wherever they might be uh, via their, their electronic uh, device. So um, let's quickly talk about, again, as we round out uh, our time here, uh, let's just talk about add, some of the benefits. Of it. Oh, sorry, go ahead, add, my apologies. One thing to that, as far as the, the differentiation between the programs and, and being able to, as a student, experience that, and as an employer, for you to know, Obviously, we're, we're taking very seriously the, the COVID uh, environment that we're in, which is why we've made the decision for our, our main campus students to do that virtually. Um, and again, to Eric's point, it works very well. Um, but this also speaks back to that, that time investment in, in your associates, your employees within your organization for being able to offer these programs anywhere whether you're in the, the northeast part of the state of Connecticut or you're right here in, in with us in Waterbury uh, or our surrounding area. So there's, there's opportunities for everybody because of that virtual opportunity. Great, thank you for the, uh, the additional, that, that was, that, those are really good points to make uh, as, as well. Um, the, um, so we just wanted to talk really quickly about the, um, some of the, for, for Better Business Bureau members. Um, there is a, an agreement in place uh, today that there is a 20% um, tuition discount to uh, members of the uh, Better Business Bureau of Connecticut. Um, and then there are, um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, for those of you that might be listening now or um, if you're sharing this information with some of uh, your, your business partners outside of uh, the summit, uh, there are some additional uh, pricing options available to employers who offer a tuition reimbursement benefit. And, um, you know, if you're interested in learning more about that, we will be providing some uh, contact information at the end of this program. And I believe that that will also be made available to you after this live uh, segment is, uh, is done. You know, the, the, um, the tagline for post today is post makes it personal and it is not something that you know came out of uh, Madison Avenue in New York out of the advertising and public relations uh, uh, world it's something that we actually uh, live and breathe every day uh, whether we're uh, in a business role with the university or if we are uh, in an, an instructor in a classroom um, what sets post university apart truly from any other university or college is that um, 
we are ensuring through the moment that a student comes to us, whether that student is your employee or a student fresh out of high school with a, a high school diploma that the ink is still wet on. We're ensuring that from the admissions process right up through the day that they walk across the stage and they're handed a degree, that we are in touch with that student for their entire journey with us, their entire time. We have academic success counselors that are watching in real time the, the, the work that a student is doing. And that academic success counselor is looking and saying, hey, wait a minute, you know, Eric is enrolled in an English class uh, uh, at Post University and he's missing two or three assignments. And they can see that in real time because of the technology that we use. And that, that academic success person is calling me in this example and saying, hey, Eric, what's going on? They're not calling to, to, to reprimand them, but they're calling to reach out and say, hey, what's going on? You're missing some work here. And hey, we looked at the, the, the business class that you're taking as well. And we see that you're, you, you're falling behind there too. Is there something going on at home? Is there a problem? Are you ill? Has something happened? Have you had a, 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 some sort of traumatic life event that has interfered with your studies? Okay. And I can tell you that we talk to students who have gone through a, a, a degree program at Post University and they speak to that interaction as uh, one of the, the truly unique things that sets the university apart, that they are connected to us beyond just the classroom and their professor, but they're connected to a real person who is, is making sure that they're okay. And that's how we make it personal. And we wanna make sure that any student that's with us, if they're having an issue and they need, to, need some assistance and maybe they're afraid to reach out to their professor, that academic uh, success council will reach out to the professor and say, hey, you know, Eric's, um, Eric's dog passed away last week and he's really, and, and that didn't happen, I'm just using that as an example, but he's really, he's really kind of, you know, um, doesn't, doesn't really have his, uh, his thoughts together on that. It was very upsetting. It was a long time family pet. And, you know, they reach out to the professor and the professor says, okay, I get it. And, you know, we can take the work a little late or we can work on figuring something out. It's that level of interaction that we have with every student that is enrolled at Post University that really makes it personal. And Sean, I don't know if you want to add anything more to the personal part of that in terms of, of some other ways that we, we do that. No, I, I think that's I think that's really good. It's just it's it's very it's just ingrained in every one of us at the university and, and whether they have student facing experience or not. Uh, I, I do want to be cognizant of the time and make sure we get, if there anybody has any questions, um, I'm not yeah, seeing I'm anything. Sorry, it's just too, sorry, go ahead. I'm not seeing any, any questions, but um, does anybody have anything they'd like to, to ask or um, anything like to add? And I'm going to put, the, uh, put this slide up so that people have it. Um, while you're thinking about questions, as we quickly run out of time, this is the contact info for Sean and myself. Our email addresses are there. Those are direct dial numbers to our, uh, to our offices. Please note that we are working remotely. So if we happen to not answer the phone, please leave us a, uh, a, a comprehensive voicemail. We will get back to you. Uh, we make a, a, an effort to respond to emails just as quickly as possible. But if higher education is something that you are, uh, you are thinking about within your workplace, if you have employees that uh, maybe you'd like to have chat with us. Um, if you've never done tuition reimbursement programming, uh, a benefit in your workplace, we can help you to uh, understand how that would work and some of the tax advantages to you as an employer as well. Uh, but we're happy to have conversations well beyond today. Um, and I think, Sean, I think we're just about out of time. So I'm just going to say thank you for those of you that participated today. Uh, we look forward to possibly hearing from you and helping you to explore some uh, higher ed opportunities for your business and your employees. Thank you all very much for, for attending and uh, we hope to hear from you. All right, thank you, Eric and Sean. Uh, be sure to check out our event sponsors by clicking on the Sponsors tab on today's event site, which is betterbusinesssummit.com. You can also still register for other breakouts, including our next breakout titled Waking Up Past COVID Business Ownership and Handling the Imposter Syndrome. That is at 1 p.m. See you then.